Arlington Finance Committee to order. Uh, I think, John, you'll have to hang over there until we get a seat free. Okay. Uh, Okay, everybody set? Okay, so our first hearing today is the Arlington Public Arts, uh, Article 37. Uh, we had some discussion of this on uh, June 1st, at our June 1st meeting, uh, and we asked them to come back. January 1st. What? January? February 1st. February 1st. What did I say? June. June. <laughs> yeah. Like Jumping ahead. Okay, so if you could uh, give an update and the materials that you sent out and, uh, and what you have, we'd appreciate it. Right, so uh, I did send everybody some more information. Yes, and, and did everybody. I'm Adria Arch from Arlington Public Art. Um, we are a small committee, part of Vision 2020, soon to be part of our bigger vision under the auspices of ACAC, uh, Cultural Commission. Um, until that happens, though, we are still part of it, uh, Vision 2020. And um, first, I'd like to say that uh, you also have this wonderful zine uh, magazine created um, by the, the artists and Cecily Miller, our public art consultant. We are so grateful to you all for approving um, the, uh, the funding for the public art consultant as the capstone of the fantastic Mass Ave uh, renovation project that completed last year. And we have had so many positive responses to this project. People stopped us in the street when we were putting up these giant um, repasted images of, of the wonderful shop owners and gallery owners. And Mark Gurton is here from 13 Forest. He's been um, a proprietor over 10 years um, on Mass Ave, nine, <coughs> nine years. And uh, he, he's, he's, he can speak to, to this himself about the, the positive responses um, the good feelings that people had by seeing the people that run the stores, run the shops, make that part of Arlington so unique and so special. So um, I just wanted to uh, provide each one of you with this, and you can read about these people. You can read their stories, including em Emily Caniff, who's the um, uh, young librarian who works at the Fox Library, that they, and, and the Friends of the Fox Library gave us um, quite a bit of funding in, in response to the fact that this was project was going on. So uh, just a quick to say thank you so much for, for that, that decision. That was so helpful and, and really is um, uh, just, uh, I think, um, d done a lot to keep us all moving in that same direction of, yes, the arts are important. Yes, you know, uh, our cultural commission can bring us under one group, under one heading. So, um, we would very much like to have uh, uh, somebody like Cecily Miller continue to work with Arlington. We think that um, this is a wise investment, that she can write grants to leverage the funds. Um, as you can see, you know, we're, we're looking to a one-to-one -one match this year, if we can. Um, maybe more than that. This is what she did more than that last year. She raised in grants more than she was actually paid herself. So we're hoping to do that and more. Um, we, you know, we really want Arlington to become an arts and culture destination, uh, which brings people to spend money in the restaurants and the shops, um, not to mention just meeting your neighbors because you see something really interesting outside and you want to talk to somebody about it. So at any rate, that's, that's what we're hoping to do. Okay. Um. Does anybody else like to add anything? Marty, well, yeah. Yeah, I was going to say, on, I mean, on, yeah. oh. <laughs> come stand up here. <laughs> yeah. On top of the fact, what, just to add to what Adria said, it's it's uh, the value, of course, to the businesses in Capitol Square were, was measurable, but it also <laughs> brings different folks to the neighborhood from outside of town to come in and go to like a unique neighborhood like ours which has unique shops and unique restaurants. We're getting new restaurants and new businesses all the time. And it also, you know, if you think about it, it brings people into town who might then start to think, well, maybe I want to move to this town. And so it increases the property values from that standpoint as well. So, um, you know, we moved 
just a little bit about our gallery. We started in Medford Square. That's why we were called 13 Forest, because that was our address there. And when we moved to, the, to, to Arlington, it was because, if you guys remember, there was Monroe Salt Works that was in the neighborhood. And I thought that, <coughs> that was a great little anchor for that neighborhood. Of course, now they just sell pizza over there. But bef before that, there were a lot of different unique businesses, not chains. That, that are there, and it makes it a very unique place for people to shop. And I can tell you that my customers come from all over the, the you know, I mean, I have a lot of great customers from Arlington, but they come from all <coughs> over the western suburbs, and as far as Newton and, and all kinds of places are coming in. So it does bring, this kind of thing does bring people to the neighborhood. And this particular project, and Cecily herself, who uh, has traveled around the world studying uh, public art and bringing unique ideas to, to our little corner of it was uh, particularly useful in just, just, I don't know if you folks got to see the Wheat Paste Project, but it was really amazing seeing the artists putting up the, you know, and putting up, not only um, putting them up, but devising them as they were going along because they had to photograph us and they had to listen to our stories. We were each interviewed and had to give a particular, um, you know, spin on our on our, our businesses. So it was a very uh, interesting project. And um, I have a newsletter that I send. I should all sign up for it. I sign that I send out every two weeks. And you know, there's six thousand people on my list, and I would made a very big deal out of it. So, like I said, I'm publishing this thing out to you know com outside of the community. So. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Uh, would any either anybody else like to add anything? Oh, I would just add that you know, Arlington is known for that it has Mass Ave as this spine and people think of it as a place to get from one place to another and when we were dealing with the Mass Ave redesign people were concerned that it was going to slow traffic because people like to just drive through Arlington and, and there's, um, you know, there's a reluctance to close Mass Ave except for on town <coughs> again because it's this thoroughfare but when you have these murals up and you have public art that's visible from Mass Ave on the street in the, in the larger than life form that these were it really helps people slow down which is first of all you know a bit safer but also lets them know this is a neighborhood you know people live here and people are doing interesting things here and this is a neighborhood that expresses itself and, and you might want to stop you might want to stop and park maybe have lunch here take a walk around look at these things so um, you know, then it changes what the people's perception of, of Arlington. Okay, questions from the committee? Tom? A couple. Um, so, you, you know, all these businessmen own these buildings. So do you get permission from the landlord? Yes, yes, yes they do. Yes, what, who takes the, the art off it when that business should leave or go? Uh, I, I, yeah, the, the, um, it, that's, they're all gone, and we actually um, hired a business called um, Atlantic uh, um, uh, Power Washing, and then um, the town actually did the one in the Fox Library, and they were made to be temporary. And we're not talking about doing this project again. We were just saying, you know, that this was something that happened, and the next projects will be different, and and try to be appropriate to that so part what of is town. The next so we we hope to do something on the bike path, temporary projects on the bike path, and again. Somebody like Cecily doesn't just go and plump something down without talking to what people want, what people would like to see, how they feel about that part of the neighborhood. This is her, and, and also and public art, any, anybody else that we would hire like Cecily would be somebody who would try to figure out what does this community want. So we're, we're looking at the bike path. We're also looking at um, possibly using the uh, town hall garden for, for a short temporary piece. Since they put the bike lane in on Mass Ave, what is, have you considered, what is the percentage of people that are on that bike path now that are Arlington residents that would see this? I think that would be a question for the Bike Advisory Committee. Yeah. I mean, they probably collect that kind of information now, but I'm sure lots of people from Arlington and beyond Arlington use that path. And it is the 25th anniversary of the bike path this, right. this year, so we are really yeah. working with a lot of other groups to coordinate and um, help to celebrate it with this with this exact thing with, right. with some fact, kind of art. Already said that arts yeah, is part of the actually, I have a subcommittee already yeah. for uh, public art. Have you even considered doing Ellington Center or the Heights? Yeah, yes. we're absolutely. We'd yes. love to. We just we do need funding. We do need a way to make it happen. What would be your rational? The bike path would be before the Center or the Heights. Um, well, one thing the bike path 
uh, anniversary is one thing that, that has come up. The other reason is that we are looking into the, well, we're, we're just about to receive cultural district designation. And that was for, um, applied f uh, for uh, the center and East, and East Arlington together. So the bike path is a natural bridge between those two things. And a better place, we think, for placement of temporary public art. Is this less sort of on Mass Ave? It's such a kind of hard place to deal with. Thank you. And even though we're using the center and uh, that area right now in the bike path, the bike path obviously goes all the way through Arlington. So we see this as a way to, to test um, right. working with, with um, the rules that apply. Right. One more thing. You have to admit this really benefits more the store owner than it does the Arlington taxpayer. This was an argument that we heard quite a bit. Correct. Of. Yeah. Does the store owner contribute any monies? Well, what I was... Trying to think whether I did or not. <laughs> well, uh, well, as a whole. I didn't, wasn't asked to, so I didn't I mean, have to. we're asking the taxpayer to help the store. Well, in this case, because it was a storefront story thing, the, the next project that, that we're Could be completely had, different. Would, be, would have nothing to I, do I with the business. I understand the next project, but we gave money this, for this project. How, you know, I actually don't know how much money it was. Okay, I'm I can't say, you. but well, I can't well, I do. I do want to answer your question <laughs> because we get a, you get a lot more for your dollar than you think because we're all volunteering our time. Yeah. Uh, rather than I, running I, our it businesses. It does need to volunteer your time, but it still benefit more the store owner than it does the Arlington taxpayer mm -hmm. who is putting up the money. And not necessarily I because so. you're introducing in the people opinion. that work you know, to, uh, they're in these shops to the community. They're saying, oh, there's a face, there's a person, there's a family here. You know, this is something that's so unique to Arlington. We don't want to have the gaps and the <coughs> Burger Kings and all the rest of it in East Arlington. We want to have these special small, but that, but again, that was just a project that happened there for that particular time. And um, But I, I want to say that uh, we've done um, a fundraising project every year through Pub Arlington Pub Public Art called Shareful Where You Sit that has raised a lot of money. To, you know, people, artists give their time to, to renovate um, a chair that would have, people, <laughs> get, people, creative people <laughs> all, all over the place have taken chairs that would have other been, otherwise uh, landed up in the, um, in the uh, landfill to decorate them, design them, and sell them for $100 a piece. And that money, their artistic ability, um, you know, is, they don't get anything back for that. Their uh, people buy them and they enjoy this beautiful chair. So we've saved chairs from the f landfill. Over at this time, we probably have saved over 500 chairs from the landfill. To, they ended up in somebody's backyard, in someone's living room, and they enjoy them. And you know that is a way that um, you know we've really supported what we've done. We paid for the art through that way. We didn't pay for Cecily that way, but we paid for all of the things ourselves Thank that you. way. Thank you. Okay. Other questions. Uh, how much money do you have remaining? Um, we are in the nature of five thousand dollars right now. Okay. And but that's to pay for the art. I mean, we need something to pay for the art with. So no, we're I, I, hoping. I know that. So, yeah. We yeah. just wanted to know what the balance yeah, yeah, yeah. was you have remaining. Yeah. Uh, to be clear, you, do you mean on the money that was that came from? What is left. The, what you is mean the left in the public art balance? In the account <coughs> yeah. for Arlington Public yeah. Arts. Pro approximately for five thousand. That's money that was raised. It wasn't the money that was that was awarded from the, the bike. Okay. Um, is the bike path a really good place to put public art? It's isolated. The minute it gets dark, it's subject to vandalism. Versus East Arlington, Mass Ave, Arlington Center, the Heights, uh, much less susceptible to vandalism. Uh, I think we've, you know, we, we can say, I, I would say that um, it's the places that haven't been taken care of that are most susceptible to vandalism. That we've had um, these transformer boxes painted, those switch boxes that other people call them switch boxes, transformer boxes. You've seen them around town. Not one in the last three years has been touched. I mean, they are pristine because people respect them and they, you know, kids aren't interested in something that looks nice. They're, they want to put their tag on something that looks lousy. So I'm not personally concerned about yeah, that. Yeah, right on Mass Ave. Yeah, They're visible. well, yeah. But, but still, I, well, I mean, it's, I, we think it's an interesting place. We think it's a delightful place because it is um, off the beaten track. It's a place where people walk uh, all the time and enjoy nature. And um, we, we, you know, of course, we'll pick pieces that will um, jive well with that setting. You know, um, we, 
there are all kinds of concerns, and, and that's what we will totally take that in consideration. This is why you have a professional public art curator, because they know artists, they know, um, you know, about uh, looking for the appropriate piece, the thing that's going to be meaningful and, and speak well and, and, um, and, and really, be, uh, you know, avoid vandalism if at all possible. Right, so. that, right. and safety issues are paramount. Yeah. You know, they're just, yeah. um, so you don't put something up there that, in there that, that, that is going to be, um, you. <laughs> you know, begging for right. something. And, and I believe lighting is being considered for the bike path, particularly that area of the bike path um, by the planning department, I believe, considered somewhere in there. And um, the other thing I would say is that it is, um, it is heavily used, and, the, and part of the design is to make East Arlington to Arlington Center and back more walkable. Um, just because going Mass Ave, that whole way, you know, you would need a lot of money to really dress that up like a boulevard <coughs> fashion and to, to really, and there's no commercial stuff going on there, so you'd really, the, you really have to work hard to make public art um, draw all the interest between East Arlington and Arlington Center along that spot of Mass Ave without anything else going on to support it. But we can bring it, you know, from Mass Ave down Linwood Street to that Spy Pond area and along, you know, the bike path there and, you know, sort of integrate that and make it more of a connector. So that's part of the idea. So part of it is scale, both for the art and for the budget, and part of it is for that kind of connectivity and varying the environment that you would experience. And these are temporary pieces. We're not talking, and nobody's talking about something that's going to be there forever and ever at all. This is We're not a, getting yeah. the Coliseum or the, pan no. the Panther? No. no, 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 no. So, you know, yeah. Okay, other questions? Thank you very much for coming. We really appreciate you. your time. Thank you. So, so okay. we're and here for the next. Then, piece. did you have any questions insofar as the, uh, the the budget, the annual budget request for the Commission on Arts and Culture, um, had been discussed? I don't know if there were questions, and I thought I hadn't been on the previous conversations. I thought we were unresolved, or is am I, or are do you have any further questions for any of us on the Commission on Arts and Culture, which is a separate um, budget yes. request? Anybody have any other qu any other questions for the Arlington Arts and Culture Commission? Committee? Right. Now, my understanding is that the Arlington Arts and Culture was created by bylaw yes. many, many, many years ago uh, to act as an overseer yes. or uh, advocate uh, yeah. uh, over all the artists' activities in the town of Arlington. That's right. Okay. Um, and one of the things uh, that we were charged with, we actually just began in 2013, even though the 1993 town meeting um, article, uh, was, bylaw. the bylaw was enacted, I guess, and that, but 2013 was the, when, when we were populated. And in the list of things we, um, our responsibilities include putting together a cultural plan, which thanks to um, FinCom funding and a terrific, uh, really um, active work of, on the part of the Department of Planning and Community Development, they found additional grants so that we are really actually doing very well in that c cultural planning process. It will, um, we have um, done a, a survey of about a thousand people. We've had nine focus groups. We will be doing a big public meeting in the town hall on March 1st um, to get as much input as possible. We hope we actually, the schedule, we are on schedule for working with the Metropolitan Area Planning <coughs> Council and um, we have another consultant uh, with funds from the CBDG funds to help do two things. One is the come up with an action plan and we're on schedule to finish that at the end of this fiscal year and also to, co to using the CDGB, CB, CDBG <laughs> grant, no, um, we are working with the planning department also to um, to coordinate the disparate town arts and culture groups that I think um, confuse many of us so that the Commission although the overall entity is one of those the Arlington Cultural Council which grants um, uh, provides grants to artists has money coming from the State Cultural Council that's another group uh, there's the Arlington Public Art Group I point to Adria there are others but Adria is um, heading that up then we have, as you know, as Adria just mentioned, we have um, an application to the State Cultural Council for a designated cultural district, district. We're waiting to hear, but we have a whole managing partnership of many 
from Arlington Friends of the Drama to the Dallin Art Museum to the Historical Society. Many and Robbins groups. Library. And, and Robbins Library, the working Chamber together, ACA, lots of them, <laughs> um, working together. And that's another group that I think shows that we can work together. The town's involved in that too. And then ATED, um, the Tourism and Economic Development Group. If we can figure out a way to coordinate, um, really streamline, be efficient, have a single entity for the town, um, that would be our, our goal, also coming from this cultural planning process. So our fiscal year 18 request is all about implementation of what we will have accomplished in our planning process to the end of this fiscal year, and that's what I'd love to answer questions about, or any of us would. Okay. Adria and Stephanie are currently the co-chairs. I used to be a co-chair until okay. recently. Okay, your request was for $15,415. Correct. Correct, that's right. Okay, are there any questions? Alan. Why are there so many different art groups? Why wouldn't it be more efficient to put them all together? That's, yeah, that's, that's exactly what I'm saying. What doing They're historically different. Yeah. The, each, the state funds, um, I don't know if it's most or every town has a cultural council. So that comes from that direction. Uh, you know, so our part of the mission to, to bring them all together. That's, that's why we're here. That's, that's yeah. our mission within Arlington, and I think that the one organization. yes, by we June want that. We will be one organization. Right. Yes, we want that yeah. desperately. Mm -hmm. I think everybody's a little bit confused. Who does yeah. what? Other cities have one entity, and then they have the different. You know, they still could grant money from the state to artists. You can still accomplish it. We also have a very finite number of volunteers. I think the more synergy, the better. And again, public percep perception is really, it would be really helpful. I think it makes people's heads spin, but we're in process on that. Dick? What was your appropriation last year for the public art? Oh, now you're talking about public art. So okay. that's, uh, again, well, I know, see, it's confusing. It I'm talking about the commission. Yeah. Public there was art no is separate. no appropriation here from public art. Oh, yeah. yeah. That was last year, none. Two, Two years, years ago. ago, it was for the public art consultant, and that was 12000 you get 12, two, two, two years ago. Two years ago. Fiscal yeah. years. And it wasn't two okay. APA. It was, was actually. How much was your appropriation last year for the uh, public art commission on arts and culture? 4,000. 4,000? 4, we've gotten 20, uh, we've gotten 30,000 more dollars from your, uh, from the appropriation we got in order to do our work. Because uh, I mean, unusual and one-time events. You got 4,000. Yeah, from the town, yeah. correct. Okay. Yeah, other came from other sources. The right. metropolitan area okay. planning yes. council. Yes, right. other sources. Yeah. Okay, are there any other questions? Okay, once again, okay. thank you thank very you much. Thank you so for much for your time, guys. Thank you, time. Time. Thank you very what much, you do everybody. For the town. Thank you, thank you. Same to you. <laughs> we stick around if you have any questions, or you really are, don't need us anymore? Nope. Okay. We're all set. All right. Thank you very much. <laughs> thank you. Bye. Thank you. Okay, let's take a minute to do the uh, minutes. Uh, uh, Peter sent the minutes out a couple of uh, days ago, and uh, hopefully everybody's had a chance to do it. Uh, Mary Margaret? Well, I was just going to say, I think you just transposed numbers on uh, the uh, 215 minutes on the back page, the AYCC. Both the revenue and expense should be 630000 They're, 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 they're both supposed to be the same, aren't they? Yes. Six, six, which, which, six, six thirty three is zero. the right number? Yes. Thank you. Okay. Are there any other corrections? Christine? Um, Peter, on the first page, um, under um, Water Bodies, McLennan Park, um, Tyrone reported that the recent survey revealed that the brown sludge is iron and manganese. Oh, okay. Uh, and where, where is that, Christine? It's in the middle of the page under Article 48, Water Bodies. It's a, it starts retention ponds at the Clinton Park. Oh. I got it, yeah. Um, it's, it, uh, the sludge is iron and manganese. And I, I think it's more accurate to say that it's <coughs> not hazardous to humans, but potentially hazardous to wildlife rather oh. than not poisonous. Okay. Okay, are there any other corrections for the minutes? Okay, do I have a motion? So moved. Second. Okay, moved and seconded to accept the minutes as corrected. Are there any other discussion? Okay, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. 
Okay. Uh, I'd like to discuss the art situation. Uh, and right now, uh, we have four groups. Uh, two of them haven't come before us yet, but we have the Arlington Arts and Culture, which is asked for 15 for 15. Arlington Alive wants 2,500. They do festivals and things like that, I guess. Arlington Public Art was requested 15, and the Poet Laureate Committee wants 500. So that's a total of $33,415. Last year, uh, the Arts and Culture budget was 4,000, and then none of the others was appropriation of any. Two years ago, the public arts up was, was 12,000, I think it was. And I've been talking a lot with the manager about this, and there's so many different, so many different groups that try to pull it together with a uh, web page, which didn't appeal to me. You know, nothing brings think people together like money. <laughs> now, the arts and culture group was actually created by bylaw back in the early 90s or early 80s to act as this group. In other words, they were all, everything was supposed to be underneath them. Uh, I guess I would suggest, and we don't have to necessarily vote on this, people can think about it for a little bit. And uh, I made the suggestion to the manager and he agreed that would be a good idea for what it's, that instead of appropriating money for all these little groups, we put a chunk of money under the arts and culture and have them supervise the whole thing. Everybody's, you know, got to pay attention, got to go to them. So if the poet laureate needs $200 for paper or whatever, they go to them and the arts and culture knows that they're part of the group. In other words, we'd have it right in the, that committee report, arts and culture, <coughs> X dollars, and underneath them list the, the other groups, the other three subgroups. And, you know, so, um, and I don't know, is it better to have a website or is it better to have, you know, art, public art on the, on the bike path? Uh, and, uh, you know, what Arlington Alive can do. Um, but if we give them arts and culture that's created by a town bylaw to do this specific thing, and we give them X dollars, and that should bring people together real fast. Uh, I was, I just pulled this out of the air. I was thinking maybe 25,000. And that'll be what we give. If you want more money, you gotta go out in some other place and, and get it. Uh, grants and stuff like that. They seem to have a lot of enthusiasm. Uh, it, it's a lot of exciting, some of the things that are happening. But um, let the management take care of dividing up the money. We just decide how much to give them over a period of, over a period of time. So I think, John, you well, raised your hand. There, there have been some instances in the AYCC, for example, in which uh, someone would, would spend some money appropriately, but it, 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 it couldn't be done properly because the comptroller uh, thought that it was, it was uh, somehow thought it was inappropriate. And I, I just want to be sure that the thing that you're trying to do will in fact be able to work. In, in other words, who will be in charge of the money and how can it be given out to these different entities? I'm not objecting because I think you have a good idea. I just want to be sure that it will, it, it will function the way you uh, say it should function. Well, I, it would be the arts. I mean, it is, a, it is a committee created by town bylaws to perform this function. Okay, so, so let's say the, the, the poet laureate wanted to buy whatever for 200 bucks. How would that, how would that occur? Would uh, the committee the, buy it and just hand it to him? Is that how no, it would they would No, they would have to you know, get approval from the Arts and Culture Committee to do that. Um, if this became a problem, 
you know, the year later, we could put it under the authority of the manager. Yeah. And so if anybody has a problem, they'll have to go to him. I'm sure he doesn't want it, but, um, uh, you know, that would be my thought. Okay. Okay, let me just go right up then. Jonathan? Yeah, um, well, I, I agree. I think, you know, that this sounds like a good idea. My, own, my question would be, would there be any restrictions on um, where the Cultural Commission could um, uh, raise, you know, who they could raise money from, and any restrictions on how they could use whatever funds are either appropriated or raised independently? So for example, could they, <coughs> is there any restriction that would prevent them from taking 15,000 and hiring a consultant for the public art? And it, would there be, would the Cultural Commission still be eligible for granting under this cultural district mechanism that they're talking about? Well, they, they're under the same restrictions as any other public body that, that gets public monies as far as, you know, they cannot spend it for uh, various items. Um, but it would be their job to decide the best use of the money among their own and the other groups competing for it. So it's your sense that they would, they would not be under they would not be restricted in any way differently than, than say, the, the, the Arlington Public Arts group. Well, if, if the uh, Public Arts Group, which is a, a subdivision of Vision 2020, uh, can go out and raise money, I'm sure they're going to go out and raise money, just like they are now. Um, it, it's, uh, uh, but, the, but the main committee, the Arts and Culture, you know, they would have to decide exactly you know, are they going to do X dollars of public art? Are they going to do, um, uh, you know, a website? Are they going to uh, work with Arlington Alive to, to do X, Y, and Z? Uh, you know, they, this, is, this is giving them the same management control that, you know, sort of public works or any other group has um, uh, to do that. Alan? Two questions. The, the, the management committee would be making the decisions on appropriations. Who, who selects, how are those people appointed or elected? Or? Uh, that's a good question. My guess is it's the, uh, anybody have a town report around here? My guess is it's the, uh, it's the board of selectmen or the manager that appoint people to it. And a second question, should we, should we be considering something like a big chunk of seed money up front, hoping that it would be sustainable? self-sustaining after that? Or are we thinking of an annual appropriation like water bodies? I would think like an annual appropriation. Okay. You know, with that, uh, so in your head, you're and right, they going forward, they know that's what they have, they live with, and then they go out and raise as much money as they can. Okay, so we like 25,000 a year forever. Well, given that number. you know, forever is a long term, so okay. <laughs> something like, yeah. Mary Margaret? So I just wanted to point out that um, on this committee is uh, the director of the library, Andrea Nikolai. So there is a town person who knows about budgets and money and has a sense of art and community. So um, there is some control there. Excuse me. OK. Uh, Charlie. Um, I, I, I'd just like to say that I think uh, Alan, Alan's mentioned this uh, seed money trying to get some sort of a sustainable organization in place. I, I think that uh, putting taxpayers' money in year after year to support the quote-unquote arts when they're basically undefined is, I don't think it's a wise thing to do. I mean, art is something that's uh, very special. We, we have, uh, you know, the soccer club has to go out and raise money for themselves. And the, and the hockey players have to raise money for themselves. Um, I think that uh, artists are no different. I mean, this is a this is something that benefits the community, just like sports. Um, and it's not a result that necessarily appeals to or services everyone. So um, 
I, I think it's a pretty subjective thing. I think if, you know, I remember the town manager came before a town meeting a couple of years ago on this subject. I can't remember exactly what the article was, but it was had to do with the arts. And, and they said they were looking to an appropriation to get this started. And it was to get the structure in place, but it wasn't to be, to be um, funding art or artists per se. And I think this has sort of moved in that direction. And um, I happen to know that my wife is a big supporter of this, so I'm probably in deep trouble right now. <laughs> but, um, Only if she's watching TV. Yeah, that's right. Uh, but I, I just think that, that um, if we can give money to that organization so that it, it can get some momentum and make itself a fundraising organization or, or somehow to sustain itself in the future, that's fine. But not everybody's definition of art is the same. Not everybody's tastes are the same. And ultimately, um, I just don't feel that this is the way the town's money should be spent. Would you um, support X dollars up front with the proviso that that will decrease over a period of time and then go and then go to zero? Well, twenty-five thousand dollars is a lot of money. Yeah. I mean, they ought to be able to do some organizational work for $25,000. Yeah. You know, um, I mean, I remember uh, five or 10 years ago, I, I, maybe it was 15 years ago, was it, was it Raleigh Chapman who, who wanted to celebrate the bicentennial? Yeah. And he came and he asked for $2,000. We wouldn't give it to him. We told him to go out and, and, and raise some money, and he did. And he, you know, and he, and he organized quite a, quite a, a big uh, a celebration. And I, I, I did, this is, you know, as a half teacher. Okay, Stephen? Yeah, I, I just wanted to um, clarify on the appointment to the Commission on the Arts. The manager has six <coughs> appointments, the, the seven members, the manager appoints six, the school committee appoints one. Um, and, and so that, 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 that's how they get to that number. If they have sufficient funds through gifts, they, they can hire a staff director. If there isn't sufficient funds, there can be a staff director, but there's no payment for that person. So just, and that, that's from the bylaw. This is a 1993 bylaw? It did, yeah. Well, 93 bylaw, that's still, yeah. it's still a bylaw. Okay, uh, Dean, and then Peter. Yeah, um, I, I have a, the general same thoughts that, that Charlie does on this. The only difference, I think, is I kind of took a different uh, approach to it, and that I, 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 I think I like to be consistent in things, and so when I break down the elements of the 25, 30,000, whatever, and it is um, some website work, I think, um, website, which two years ago we told the tourism people no to, and I guess my, my question as I think in my head is if we say yes to them, well, that's inconsistent, and then if the rec department shows up and says, look, We've got like 10, 15 sports user groups that kid that for kids that are everywhere, right? It'd be great if we just had one website. So give us five grand for that. Um, and and I, I say that as someone who somehow in the last two years got sucked onto the Arlington Soccer Club board. Because um, I'd like you guys to pay for it. I don't want to pay for it anymore. I mean, so, so where did this end? So tourism, no. Arts and culture, yes, you get a website. Sports groups, you show up. Well, and of course, we know like sports parents would show up like crazy and would actually have people at this meeting. Um, and, and so I think there's, I think we have to be consistent. And I think the same thing for branding and marketing. I don't remember giving. I remember the tourism people asked for that money too, and we said no to that as well. So I kind of go to that same thought process of when you become consistent in your application of funding, and when do you become inconsistent because you're picking, you know, winners and losers. So I, I think from my perspective. If we picked the number out of this 15 grand and said, you know, they get their 4,000 from last year, maybe they get another thousand to help organize these other groups. That block of money, five grand, that makes sense. I don't know how the rest makes any sense. And then, because it's not consistent with what we've done recently, it's not consistent with what we do next year when the next group showed up. And then that other block of money for whatever they wanted to do on the bike path, well, that's a separate discussion. So that's just my opinion. I'm sorry, that's a. And that's a separate discussion. I mean, because we funded it two years ago, so I can't say that we were inconsistent in that regard. 
So I, I mean, I'm just, I guess I'm focused more on that 15415 that they asked for, which I know we didn't, we wouldn't, if we approved it all, we'd be consistently applying what we've done either in the past or in the future. So I could see paring that down, and then we could talk about the other sort of bucket of money. Okay, so part of, I mean, part of this is whether to uh, appropriate money towards these groups, and part of it is also how we manage to try to, uh, you know, bring this together under one decent management organizational setup um, so we don't have 10 or 15 groups coming before us every year looking for this piece or that piece. Uh, so those are, I think, a couple of issues. Peter? Uh, two things. First of all, the um, Arlington um, Public Art, as you said, is a is a task group under Vision 2020. So if you make, <coughs> if you make a list, I guess you should incorporate that in the list also. A list of uh, groups. I don't know whether you had that in mind or not. <coughs> I'm sorry. Uh, other yeah. groups in Vision 2020? No. No, that particular group in 2020 is the one we've been listening to. Right. Arlington, Arlington Public Art. Arlington Public Art. Right. So I, I would suggest that in the list of groups that ACAC is going to uh, supervise or whatever, um, you should include that one. I, I, I don't know whether you did that one. Yeah, I did. Made your list. Okay. I mean, the, the, three, the four ones that have come before us of Arlington Arts and Culture, Arlington Alive, uh, Arlington Public Art, and the Poet Laureate Committee. These, which, are, these are the ones that are listed in Article 37. Is that what well, these are, no. These are the, um, you know, two of them are new. Uh, one of them we've dealt with before, the Arlington Public Arts two years ago. Arts and culture, you know, has been part of it. I think we gave $4,000. So, I mean, we've got a lot of committees and commissions. None of the others wanted more money. You know, so, you know, our policy has always been if you don't need any money, you need to come before us. But, but, but this thing seems to be growing, is my concern. And I just want a consistent way going forward that we deal with all of it. And if, if we give whatever money we're giving to one group and have them control it all, that, that's what I was trying to drive at. Yeah, I think it makes a lot of sense. As far as a lot of money is concerned, um, the uh, ATED, the Tourist uh, Development Group, got uh, $20,000 uh, three or four years ago. And following year another twenty thousand dollars and for that we got some signs this group without any money at all these these groups I mean have done all kinds of things with money that they've raised you know, it's very likely it seems to me that they'll continue to do all kinds of things Alan uh, I just wanted to, to note but there's an art that doesn't seem to be represented here which is music I mean, a, poetry seems to be coming in but if, if we do make some sort of statement about a, a, a supporting appropriation. We should make sure it's inclusive of all the arts. Well, Forge Fest does the sculpture. Music. Forge Fest, yeah. but, you know, Forge Fest. There, you know, Arlington Philharmonic. There are other. There are plenty of musical organizations that could use support as well as sculpture, flat art, transformer boxes. Yeah. That's well, I mean, here we're <coughs> just dealing. I mean, we have one arts and culture which is created by a town bylaw. Yeah. So that's that's a town agency. Um, so I'm just trying to deal with the ones that are coming before, that are before us now. I mean, we could divide them up and say yes, no, yes, no, right. or whatever. But I, you know, I guess what I'm recommending is if we're going to say yes, we put it under one group and have them handle it. Yeah, I, yes. I agree. I'm looking at the bylaw. There's no specification for which particular art they're talking about. It's just arts and culture. Right. So I just want to make sure. Like, I remember when, when water bodies seemed to be only going to Spy Pond and the Resin Hills Pond, we said, no, look at all the water bodies. That's right. It, same sort of statement, look at all, you know, be inclusive of all the arts, yeah. not just the ones that you're representing. Um, Tom? Not having the bylaw in front of me, but it sounds like that bylaw was meant to be for these groups to already automatically go, on to, go into that bylaw. Now I see them drifting on their own, so I think it's the bylaw we need to follow. Yeah, and it, it really just is sort of art and culture. It Which means that these groups should be talking to the bylaw. And the bylaw should be maybe <coughs> coming to us. So the question is who's going to control it? We already have it in place. 
I mean, that's my opinion. Not seeing the bylaw in front of me. Yeah. And what I'm sort of emphasizing is you get more control with if you're in charge of the money and you force them to come before. Stephen? Yeah, well, and, and I also think we, we heard tonight that by June helped <coughs> to have everything consolidated. So if that's the case, then for fiscal 18, it should be one group. So it, it, in, in my mind, that's, that, that's an appropriate suggestion to if we are going to recommend an appropriation that it, it, it go to one group, to, to, to the, the bylaw group, if you will. Okay, Mary Margaret. No, I was just going to echo that, but also that um, because they applied for that designation of art and culture, it wasn't supposed to be just art. It was all, all culture, and I think their goal is by the num by the two times that they've appeared or the two different groups that they represent, and from talking to other people, the, the goal is to have it be one group, and I and probably we have to remind them that and that's how we can specify the money. And by the way, I just saw 25. I mean, we could be 15, it could be 20, it could be whatever, you know, we feel comfortable with uh, uh, on that. So, and, and you know, I'm, uh, I'm not sure if there's a lot of consensus right now. We don't have to vote on it. Brian? Uh, I'm not sure where all this is, but historically, say over the last five years, how much money has been spent on, roughly, on these items? Because when I were just saying, I said, I don't remember the, the 12,000 two years ago. I tend to remember yeah. all these things and, uh, or normally, unless, of course, it's fading. Yeah. But in, in general, how much money has been spent over the last five years? Well, I, I think, I, actually, I think it was 15. I only have last year's book. Yeah. Uh, last year, the um, public art was 15. And then last year, we turned it down because they said, you know, we told them in the, in the thing that We'll give this to get you going, but to actually create the art, you need to go out and raise money, which they did. Right. So there, uh, last year, arts and culture, we gave 4,000. Um, Paul Warriott and Arlington Alive, we haven't given any. <coughs> Charlie? <coughs> yes, so, um, Alan, I think you were leading the committee in the right direction with pointing out the existence of the bylaw and having a structure here, but I wonder, if, um, if the general discussion that we're having isn't somehow are we making arts policy for the town? And if there is going to be an arts and culture policy for the town, shouldn't it be at the Board of Selectmen, not at the Finance Committee? Or are, every year when they come here, are we going to make a judgment about poetry versus music versus watercolors? I mean, I just think... Um, That's what I'm trying to get away from by giving it to one group. Right. In other words, I'm trying to get us out of policy and saying finance. This is how much we can afford to give on a consistent but shouldn't, basis. Shouldn't the board of select? What I'm saying is, shouldn't the board of selectmen, which is an elected body and ostensibly responsible to the to the public, um, I shouldn't say ostensibly responsible to the public. <laughs> and, he didn't mean that. I didn't mean it. Um, <laughs> And, and shouldn't they be saying, well, we want to spend $100,000 a year on art, or we want to spend $10,000 a year on art? I mean, that's, that sort of direction should be coming from them, not from the Finance Committee. That's what I'm trying to say. Yeah. Well, the, the, the request for appropriation is, is to, the, us. to the Finance Committee. Yeah. Uh, Grant? So that's a good idea. It's a nice, nice way of trying to, to bundle it. That would, how would the money, would the money be budgeted or would it have to be done via warrant article? Uh, well, we do it under Article uh, 44, the uh, Committees and Commissions article. Um, and, and we do it under that. So I think I'd say, pick a letter, J, Arlington Commission on Arts and Culture, X dollars. Uh, and then underneath that, I'd probably list, you know, Small parentheses, Arlington Alive, uh, Poet Laureate, and Arlington Public Arts. Okay. And, uh, uh, and, and, you know, we could even write a comment on how we we think this should go. And, and then in the future, then there would be nothing to stop someone in the future of getting a bunch of signatures and trying to, uh, and, and coming to us and asking for more money for a different art thing that wouldn't fall under this. 
the same way the water bodies kind of. Yeah. I mean, anybody can put together 10 signatures and put a warrant right. article in and come before us. It's our job to sort of pull this together and make some reasonable, reasonable financial sense for the for the town. Right, and our response, consistent response, would be no. We have you have to go before this commission or this committee that we established. So we're not not a one off in front of a, a, a you know water water department. Yeah, okay. John. Um, would it be possible and appropriate to go to the Commission on Arts and Culture and ask them to work with these other groups to come up with a consolidated request of the Finance Committee so that, that we don't have to sit here and say... No, we're no, not. We're, we're giving them X dollars, but that's what they said they're doing. Right. This is sort of going in the direction that the town and they want to go in. Rather than, but I'm asking, rather than us voting at this time to, to try and bundle this money in some form or fashion to get a you know, supplemental request from the commission itself where they come up with the bundled amount that is they believe is appropriate. Well, my guess is they'd want $33,415 <laughs> on that. So, Perhaps. Uh, Steve and then Charlie. Yeah, and, and, and just to, to further Charlie's comment on the policy, I, the selectmen approve the six members that the manager puts up for the um, commission on arts and culture. So, if if those six positions are filled, then we probably should confirm that. Then that to me is the policy statement from the selectmen, and then it is a matter of the annual request for money. But if and, and it took them a long time to, to fill these seats, but if, if it started in 2013, that to me is the message from the selectmen that they at least want this commission to to do some work and, and to promote art and, and culture. I think it took a few years for them to fill any of the slots. Okay, okay. Oh, Charlie? Just a, a, a clarification question. When Barbara was speaking, is she a member of that? Uh, what do you, what is the, the Commission on Arts and, and Arts Culture? And culture. Is, that, is that what she was talking about? Was that that group? <coughs> Barbara Tosta, she's sitting right next yeah. to you. Right. Uh, yes. Oh. She used to be she, she's in the arts and culture. Do, do I, I think there's a lot of inbreeding yes. right. you know, between the members. Okay. She, she, she was talking about the bylaw. And, and she was talking about trying to pull all these things together. Right. That's, yeah. correct. Yeah. That's correct. That's yeah. correct. So, so I'll tell you, I'll make a motion. Uh, I'm, I move that uh, that we. Uh, and I'm doing this for just to get some clarity of this direction. Uh, that we. How much did you say you want us to? Well, I no. said $25,000. Okay, so $25,000 for the Commission on Art and Culture under whatever the relevant article is. Is there a second to that? Second. 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 Yeah, that's 45, it's Article 45, right? It's Article 30. 44. It is 44. Okay. Yeah, Article 44. And that's article 45. Okay, so, and, 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 and then we, 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 we cannot vote any of the other requests. Okay. Uh, okay. So, the, so the most. Alan, you're looking at the your finance review. Oh, I'm sorry. You're right. Um, it's Article 45. It's Art Article 45. I'm sorry. I was looking at last year's. What about 37? 37. 45. Well, 37 is the public arts. So. Yeah. I'm saying zero. I'm saying no on that. Right. So Article 44. The motion is for $25,000 under the Arlington Commission on Arts and Culture. That money to fund them, Arlington Public Arts, Arlington Alive, and the Poet Laureate, and then zero, and then zero on Article 37. Okay, so that's been made and seconded. Let's focus on that, Christine. Um, I actually drafted the bylaw, and I was on the talking about years ago, um, and it, and it, the intent was to have one umbrella organization. Um, and what the reason it hasn't happened was that the commission that was created was never staffed, um, and it never took the off. I think because I, I'm sorry, Christine, can you speak up just the, a little bit? The commission was never wasn't staffed, so it never really took off until I guess recently. <coughs> um, but its intent was to to do what Al you're suggesting happen. And I think that's a wonderful idea, and I think we should do that. But my problem with this vote is that uh, 
for the reasons Dean has said, I, I have a problem with the amount and what it's going to be used for. Um, so I wonder if we can split, the, split this vote, like to have two votes. One, yes, we'll give money to the commission, and then two, a discussion of what that amount is and what, what we think is appropriate or not. Um, and I'm specifically thinking of the web designer because I do recall the conversation with last year yeah. where I think that there were some legalities that were part of the reason we, we, we voted that down. So I'm just suggesting that we have two separate votes. One, that we give this money to a group and second, a discussion about how much. Okay, so okay. one is sort of the policy. This is what we're going to do. The second is uh, you're recommending as we decide on the amount. Right. Okay. Uh, let's know how you're getting to well, let, let's <coughs> let's sort of discuss this first, and then I'll ask the sponsor if he wants to, you know, do that. Dean. Can you let us know, how are you getting to thirty-three thousand? Because I'm not getting to thirty-three. <coughs> well, the arts and culture wanted fifteen thousand four fifteen. I got that one. Arlington Alive was twenty-five hundred. Oh. Arlington Public Arts was tw fifteen thousand, and the poet laureate was five hundred. Right, so the public arts, but oh, the public laureate was what? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. How much was the public laureate? 500. 500. So the 15,000 is Article 37. Seven. Right. Okay. So that would, under the motion, that would be zero. Everything would be put on the, the commission and committee's article. I see what you're saying. But 8,000, not 15,000. Okay, uh, Alan? I just want to point out that ACAC already has a pretty nice website. Yes. I'm not sure what they need $15,000 more to do. It's, it's a pretty good looking little website. Okay, that's the one that you worked on with them. No. no. <laughs> <laughs> it would have well, been nice if it's the Commission of Arts and Culture. It's their website. It lists all the groups and it has a musician on it. And yeah, right. so oh. I'm not sure why it, they need more than this. <laughs> As a blog, it's fairly active. I, Mary Margaret. So, based on what Christine said, can we make it con giving the money contingent on them creating just one organization? Well, th that's their job. Right. Okay. Now, and that's what they said they want they want to do. This just reinforces it by giving them control right. of the purse strings. Okay. I guess I'm just saying, should we make it really obvious? So? I I could write up a comment. You know that that. You know, we don't, usually these articles are pretty standard, but uh -huh. we can write a comment to that effect. Um, you know, on there, um, Stephen. Yeah, just a, a question on on Dean's point, Christine's point was was the request from ACAC was the fifteen thousand four fifteen entirely for web design, or was no. it? No. No, no, it was it was five thousand for a web designer. It was ten thousand for branding and marketing professional to create a cohesive identity for Arlington and culture in Arlington, and then it was like four hundred bucks for other stuff okay. that aren't worth reading. Okay, and so was the web. So what about the marketing and branding? Is is for consistency reasons? Are people troubled with that too? Uh, yeah, I think of it more like the web design okay. personally. Okay, okay, uh, Paul. So what about their? Four thousand dollars that they've gotten in previous years was that? Do they? Are they asking for that in addition to this? No. No. Okay. They. It looked like four hundred and fifteen dollars for sort of miscellaneous things like town day, ten and five. That's been that's been discussed. Uh, Tom. Problem that I have with all this: uh, give me money, and I don't know what they're going to do with it. I don't know how they're going to break it up. Who they're going to give it to? Well, that would be their management job that they have to do because uh, they'll have conflicting needs and they're going to sit down like any other organization and decide. I, I understand that, but shouldn't, shouldn't we know? What happens if they give nothing to the other three and decide to keep it all for themselves? I mean, it's well, like if somebody come in and say, give me 50000 you've got it. I don't know what you're going to do with it, but you got it. Well, I mean, we, we've listened to all the things that they want to do. I'm assuming the poet laureate want, want the money for general miscellaneous purposes. Uh, but uh, I, it seems to me if, um, if they do a good job, then that would be leaned towards maybe we'll give them some more next year. If they do a lousy job and there's infighting and, and people are being left out, 
then next time we do this, we'll say uh, expend it under the direction of the town manager and let him straighten it out. Because most of, most of the articles we do, like Water Bodies and, and uh, Harry Barber and all that, it's expended under the direction of the town manager. Uh, we're sort of expecting that, that the arts and culture group will be in a, a public body appointed by the selectmen will act responsibly, give them the chance. Uh, that Gene? sort of is my question. So, say we give them twenty-five thousand dollars. Isn't it on that co the people that are are um, appointed to figure out that they can't use it for um, like something that's illicit, like the website? If it's there's a legality issue, isn't it on them? And doesn't that is it takes it off us? And isn't you know do we think that we would trust them to figure that out? Or um, yeah, just, yeah just it's putting it on person. them. Right. To, to, to do the job that the bylaws are created for. Okay, John and Alan? Uh, well, I, I was going to just say, but, and in the future, then the Arts and Culture Commission would come to the Finance Committee and, with a request and, and with a, a discussion and description of how they intend to spend that money. So instead of having four separate yeah, groups right. come exactly. and, and lay out their plans, there would be one, one yeah. group that would be Okay, um, Charlie, how do you feel about splitting your vote between, uh, between uh, the policy of appropriating it all to arts and culture and then voting secondly on the dollar figure? I agree with the point. Okay, uh, anybody have an objection to that? Okay, so there's gonna be, actually, there'll be three votes because we'll have to deal with Article 37. Okay, so the first vote is on the policy of under Article 44, 45, uh, 45 <laughs> sorry, I'll get it right. Under Article 45, uh, to give one sum of money to the arts and culture, uh, their job is to take care of all four groups uh, and, and plan on going forward, uh, rather than give a certain amount to each group. Everybody, all those in favor of that, please raise your hand. One, two, three. Oh, it's unanimous. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, now the the motion has been made and seconded for twenty five thousand dollars as the figure. Is there? Uh, Is it too late to offer an amendment? Uh, sure. I, I offer an amendment for twelve thousand because I don't see a need for. Okay, so, John? Well, uh, now I have two questions. Uh, my first question would be, should you, uh, what is Arlington Alive and what are they, they're asking for $2,500, do we know what the purpose of the, what they, how would they? they my understanding is they, they work on festivals, small festivals in various places. Uh, uh, much more than that, I don't know. It's a, yeah. it's a, okay. Did you move to Peter? It, it's for bringing group, the, the community together in, in the open spaces. They've had several of those in, in the center over the last five or six years yeah, with bands and. Oh, so they're, and so they're the ones who sponsor the music in the center? Uh, I don't think it's that one. Summer Arts Block Party. Okay. And, uh, so there's your music. My, my second question would be have you. Uh, Alan, how'd you come up with 12 by getting rid of the 15, 3, 5? I threw a little back. Okay. Could have gone to 10. Okay, or what? Or we could have gone to 15. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, why don't we do it this way? The mo main motion is 25,000. If you don't want to give 25,000, you vote no, and then somebody else will have to recommend a different figure. If the majority says 25,000, that's the number. Okay, all those in favor of appropriation of twenty-five thousand to the arts and culture, please raise your hand. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Whoops. Ten. All those opposed. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 
Okay, so that motion carries 10 to 8. Um, do I have a motion on Article 37? Move no action. Okay. Second. Second. Uh, everybody clear? Okay, all those in favor of no action on uh, Article 37, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. Okay, and I'll write up a uh, comment. Okay. Um, budgets. Who has budgets? We have budgets. Okay. Everybody get their budget book out. Okay, Mary Margaret, oh. what you got? Okay, so I, I got some answers. <laughs> Always good. Uh, so why don't we go backwards here and do um, AYCC in the back. So the questions you all asked, um, oh, 207, or really 208, <coughs> 209. Um, you want to know the fund balance. So at the start of the year, the fund balance was $37,348 for AYCC. Okay, so that's at the end of fiscal 16. Good, good fund just, balance, yeah. Yes. So 30... 37,348. Okay. All right, the other question was what grant funding was lost? You, you had asked that. And um, so what Christine wrote is that it was an adjustment in the federal grant that was received and due to the timing last year, um, Let's see, the annual amount received is 12000 however, in FY17, two years of funding was received at the same time because of the timing, so. I'm sorry, could you repeat that? All right, there was an adjustment in a federal grant that was received, because you had asked why, you know, what grant funding was less. Okay. Um, Usually the annual amount received is 12000 but in FY17, two years of funding was received pretty much at the same time, just because of timing. Um, you had also asked where gifts and donations come from, and is $90,000 a realistic number? Yes, $90,000 is a realistic number. The, fun, the gala they do every year does raise a lot of money. So that's, and then they get gifts and donations <coughs> throughout the year. And they get gifts from people who couldn't go to the gala. So yes, that $90,000 is realistic. I think a couple of the churches give monies yeah. there too. Yeah. That, yes. So I think you can be confident about that. Um, all right, the psych nurse pay increased $6,500, and that's because her hours are increasing. We have to have a, a psychiatrist available to oversee, but the psych nurse now is taking on more of the role that the psychiatrist was doing, so it's taking on more hours, and she, I, like I mentioned last time, she can prescribe meds. Yeah, I just want to comment that the psychiatrist costs her extremely high by comparison to that salary, so it's a, it's a good thing to be doing. Right. Yeah. Um, but for compliance, we still have to have a psychiatrist in charge of the program. Um, so uh, that's what all the questions I had written down about the AYCC. Okay. So we already approved it. I just yep. wanted to answer the question. Okay. Is there any questions for Mary Margaret on the AYCC? No. Okay. Okay, and then the um, Council on Aging Transportation one, yep. um, page 203, uh, that fund balance is 
$80,209. What if we ever paid that taxi driver? Uh, no, I think that, that whole thing just disappeared. I, I think they just um, <coughs> offered what they offered and let it go. Okay. Um, you, Alan, had asked about what the trend in ridership was for vans and taxis. And, right, so what she said is that the taxi service is very popular among the users. Um, we limit the number of trips per month to allow for more participants to join the program. That's the dial-a-ride taxi for which you buy tickets up front. Um, the trips per month per subscriber are maxed. The van is now running local errand service, which has increased the number of residents who are served. Right, and we had mentioned that there are four part-time drivers now, so that um, people are on call all the time. But uh, there was one main van driver who passed away, and um, Christine felt that this worked better to have four drivers on call. Let's see. She said, we're also looking into alternative ways to provide services and have reached out to Uber and Lyft and are looking at other ideas for next year. So that, um, because right now you can have, be driven to medical appointments in contiguous towns or in Arlington. Um, you have, you've seen the van take people to stop and shop and whatever so they can do their grocery shopping. Um, they have to do other errands, but they're you know they're grouped together. So it does it provides a lot of services to people who don't have transportation or can't drive. So does that answer everybody's questions okay. about that? Any questions? Okay, thank you. All right. Um, and then I guess we can go to the library. Libraries on page 155. And just for informational purposes, I sent you that presentation that uh, the director had done um, for the trustees of the library. <coughs> um, and I don't, but there's a couple things I just wanted to point out about that. So. Um, just to explain that we have the Fox Library and um, the town supports Fridays, the Friends of the Fox support Saturdays. Um, all right, we're increasing the hours for the part-time technology librarian and there's a new part-time adult services librarian. Um, the Fox Library has the usage of the Fox Library has increased significantly since last year. There are more people using it, more people moving into East Arlington, as we know, and um, the circulation has increased, how they use it, uh, what they use it for. There's a lot more events there for the kids, and so that's why they need to have it open more. Um, if you look, let's see, what else that was interesting? Uh, as, as they point, the trustees point out, the library is a critical resource for children and working families who can't get there on weeknights or weekdays. Um, Saturdays are seeing a much higher average circulation than weekdays. And she, you know, she gave you some um, data on those. So the library has, it's also become a neighborhood library and it's sort of building community. Um, there's a whole staff that's trained to be in that library and to um, help the families use it and it's structured around that. Um, so they need the weekend hours. Uh, let's see. Oh, and there is a rotation now, and they're just going to increase the rotation so that the li all the children's librarians work at both libraries. Um, what else is good? So that's basically it, and part of what they're 
planning on doing is just <coughs> doing a study of both libraries to talk about the space usage and the, the way it's used um, for whom or by whom and how they can make it more uh, friendly for the way the community wants to use both libraries. John? Well, I just want to say that uh, we received this information from when Mary Morgan and I went to the trustees meeting and uh, I continue to be very impressed with Andrea Nicolette. I, I think she's doing a great job. And she says, uh, in response to my question, that the, uh, also the RFID is coming along very well. And I, I think it's a. I'm sorry, the what? The RFID. You know, they're, they have. The tags in the books? Tags in all the books. And, oh, okay. And uh, you can do your own checkout and all that sort of thing, or you will be able to. Uh, and it's, uh, what did she say, within a year or something like that should be completed? Well, all the, t all the books are already tagged. Right. It's all, it's all the other media. Yeah. Yeah. Right, that's right, right. So they're working on it. Um, and also, that, that has really improved productivity because with the tags, people can check out themselves. And they're doing that. The capital planning budget at work. There you go. Yes. John, John did ask about that. That's right. That. No question. That's why I say it, Charlie. You're doing a great job every year. <laughs> All right. So let's see. Um, so if you look at the, the budget, now that facilities um, has taken over, they cover the custodians and the overtime. Um, the salary and wage increases are mostly uh, step increases. And let's see what else I want to say. Um, again, the custodial services are paid for by facilities, but also that other contracted services includes what they pay to be part of the Minuteman Library members, uh, member. I mean, the whole, that whole system throughout the state. So we can get books transferred from one library to another. Um, the otherwise unclassified is just miscellaneous supplies. And I asked about down at the bottom the Friends of the Fox Library, and they absolutely do expect the same amount to come this year as they've been given in previous years. Um, let's see. So the minimum wage is $11, so all the pages um, get $11. Um, they're adding $20,000 for the part-time Fox librarian. Um, let's see. So, and, and the um, Friends of the Fox will continue to support Saturday. Right, the, oh, she also said the circulation at Fox has doubled in the last year. And I talked about the space usage. Um, oh, and also you have that little box. The, little, the shop at the, at the Fox Library has provided uh, revenue for more hours as well. And let's see. There are more groups using the community room. Too. They're private and nonprofit groups using <coughs> the community groups. So I don't know if people have specific questions about that, about any of this, and if not, I would just recommend the budget as presented. Questions? Just one quick one. There sure. Right, what, which what why that is the one that um that they belong to the network, the Minuteman network? Which, which is it the, is other contracted services, 5236. Okay. Right. Thanks. I second the budget. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. Motion's been made and seconded uh, for 2354236 as presented. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous? 22. Okay? Yes. I don't have any more at this time, but I would, um, if you haven't had a chance to look at the presentation that Andrea did, um, please look at it because it really, the library 
is, I think we mentioned last year, um, is the fifth largest in circulation in the state, which means only Boston, Worcester, Springfield, uh, I don't know which other one or had Brookline maybe. So it's an awesome library. Okay, I'm, we're done for now. Okay. Uh, Paul, uh, we can do police, which is on Just updating on the current fiscal year. Um, at this point, a conservative estimate is that it um, might go $12,000 over in salaries and overtime, um, but he anticipates that that's that's his conservative estimate, and he anticipates that when it's when it's all done, he won't have a deficit in the personnel budget. Uh, there is some question on expenses that it could go a little over on the expense budget this year, uh, primarily for expense items that were unanticipated having to do with the move uh, into and out of the fire station, not the fire station, out of, out of this building. Um, so uh, he's still working with the Permanent Town Building Committee to see if some of those expenses could be covered um, by the, the capital budget for the this building renovation. Um, Tell him I'm sure Charlie can come up with the money. <laughs> uh, one thing had to do with the expense of, of moving into that little corner of uh, the building next door that they used and, uh, and having to uh, uh, Paint, paint the walls and put it back together when they were all done using. As far as uh, next year's budget, um, it's, it is um, pretty much just um, normal um, cost of living. The salaries and wages line at the top is slightly higher than the cost of living because they're adding a half-time social worker. The, the staffing on police officers is not changing, uh, but they're in the um, support category. Uh, on um, page 138, uh, they're adding a, a half-time social worker. They've had a social worker working um, primarily with the uh, opioid uh, epidemic problems uh, through grant money for six years, I believe he's had grant money. Um, but the grant is probably going to run out. And while he's like to have a full-time social worker, um, for, for budgetary reasons, they're only proposing a, adding a half-time social worker. So is the focus of the social worker on, on like the o opioid? Yes. And I'm assuming they work with AYCC or um, with them? My, I think what happens is that time, sometimes when they're um, uh, going to do an arrest or they, they find um, someone overdosing, um, they call in the social worker to work with the, the person involved to uh, uh, find rehab and, and other resources they can do to help that person. Okay, so this person was formally on grant money? Right. Uh, There's also adult behavioral health, and the AYCC is child behavioral health. That's true. Okay, formally on grants. Um, uh, other than that, there's uh, so uh, so under personnel, it's except for that position, it's essentially just uh, the normal cost of living. Um, under expenses, um, there's uh, an increase in 
teleprocessing that's actually um, to pay for uh, additional software that they're using um, that allows uh, citizens to file reports electronically <coughs> over the internet instead of having to have a police officer come and take their complaint and record it and, and type it in or whatever. So um, this software should result in, um, in, in more time available for the officers to do their normal work. And which category is that under? It's under 5251 teleprocessing. Not, not the most descriptive. Item name there. Okay. Uh, and I forget what the the two thousand dollar increase in other supplies is. Oh, it was uh, wasn't it for maintenance of plants? Oh Stuff yes. <laughs> It's for taking care of the plants in this building since they uh, <laughs> invested so much in the building and uh, Fred is um, uh, somewhat obsessive in wanting to keep it looking nice and in good order uh, since they uh, did that work. He says he's been able to juggle things and get the uh, custodian in for half a day on Saturdays to try and uh, keep it uh, clean and in good repair. Good. It's good to take pride in your building. So uh, overall then I, I move the budget uh, as printed. Eight million two hundred fourteen thousand eight hundred and seventy six. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Discussion? Questions? Charlie? Yes. Um, well, has there been any discussion with uh, Chief Ryan? I, as I recall, he was active in the restorative, restorative justice movement about a year ago. I remember seeing his name in the paper. I'm, I'm sorry. I can't uh, about a year ago, I remember seeing his name in the paper associated with the uh, restorative justice movement. Um, you know, as a po where uh, uh, where possible criminals do restitution rather than uh, jail time, and and uh, I noticed in the paper this last week, the legislature is redoing the uh, criminal code and putting a lot of emphasis on restorative justice. And I wonder if we have any opportunity to get any state money for that. Um, we didn't discuss that, but I'll uh, send him an email and see if I can get some more information on that. He did tell us about a a trip. He took, not at town's expense, to Israel where he saw how they do their security and terrorism dealing and everything. He said it was a, a very, very informative and enlightening. He talked about how they have, when they have a terrorist incident, they have like this task force that goes in and tries to collect all the evidence first, but then clean it up as fast as they can so that wherever it is can get back to normal business, and that that is significant in defeating the intent of the terrorists. So I will I will ask him about the, uh, the restitution and what the uh, legislature. Other questions? Okay, motion has been made and seconded for. 8,214,876. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous? <coughs> 22. While we're on police, uh, Dick, do you have any more information on the plaque? Have you been able to get the wording? Yeah. contacted 
called me Monday and said that they had found all the records and the design and everything of the plaque. And it was 26 years ago. Wow. Yeah. Did they have the cost? Huh? I'm trying and to remember. So how. he sent off that off to the foundry yeah. who cast it. And he called me back today. In 1996, when we bought it, the first one, it was $434. Today it's $1,846. It's four to six weeks delivery. <laughs> okay, so we get the exact same thing. Yeah, yeah. Okay, uh, Dick, could you carry this on? This is great that you found this. Uh, could you talk to the police chief and uh, make sure um, that the fun, you know, the, the, that he knows the amount and it's okay to go ahead, and then we can just order it. Who are you going to? John Coles. Turn, you think it would be the, that? He's already volunteered one. Oh. Okay, then. Uh, Nick, you just talk, you know you know John Cole. Yeah. Herm Town Building Mate. Yeah. Didn't you? We okay. Had, we had an email correspondence. You were copied on it. Okay. Probably missed it, but. And uh, he said he would find the money and pay for it. Okay. Um. Do you want to uh, just give him a call or shoot well, him? Well, Dick's got all the. Okay. All the Dick, then why don't you email John Cole saying this is the cost of the plaque. Um, uh, just want assurance or just confirm the money's available in the budget and then we can go ahead and order it. Let him order it. Uh, yeah, it's his budget actually. That's right, you're right. You know, you're right. Uh, why don't you uh, confirm that, give him all the information uh, and ask, ask him to order it. Yeah. And install it. And install it. <laughs> <laughs> now, here's a question. Where should it be? Right there. Well, you can put it right under Arlington Police, <laughs> or you can put it over what here. What's what, about the light, what about the, about the light switch? Okay. Well, I suppose that's the entrance. I'm trying to remember how big this thing was. Uh, John Cole's an architect. Why don't we let him figure it out? <laughs> Good, good idea, okay. Dick, where did you find all these records? Well, I remembered where I ordered it from. Uh, and I went over there, and at first the uh, first person I talked to knew nothing. <laughs> and then I just dug back, and I w went into the uh, cemetery and found out when O'Neill died, and took that he died in February of 93. And I took that date and started to work forward from that. And gave them some uh, <coughs> dates to look for, and they did, and they came up with the whole thing. And even my signature on it for okay in the... <laughs> well, well, evidently these people say that because I assume uh, a family might want to say, I want the same kind of a headstone that grandma had or, you know, my girlfriend had or something. <laughs> 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 okay, so that's great. 1848. Probably it's the cost of the metal would be my guess is yeah, why he, it's... He said there used to be four foundries around here. But they've all disappeared. He had this comes up out of uh, Pennsylvania. Well, okay, that's great. So if you could call, email John Cole, yeah. and and get the ball rolling, that's great. Okay, you hit a home run, Dick. Right. Okay. Uh, I feel like the lawyers do five hundred. <laughs> <laughs> The applause. <laughs> okay. Um, any other budgets? I can do monitor. Okay. So it's on page uh, 142. Okay. What's that, Daryl? What, what, what's on 142? Five. Oh, five. 
Um, so just, uh, just to cover fiscal 17, um, they are tracking uh, fairly well uh, on the uh, against the fiscal 17 appropriations, except for um, their uh, they've got four uh, retirement buyouts. So they're they're probably going to be looking for a, a reserve transfer of about a hundred thousand. Then for fiscal 18, um, there's really not a whole lot to see here. Uh, personnel um, is just going up slightly. Um, longevity has obviously got the biggest increase on the personnel side. Uh, under expenses, the only two items of note are um, uh, increasing electricity, 50 to 11 electricity by 10,000, uh, which is offset by a uh, decrease in Yeah, heating oil uh, by ten thousand, and a lot of that's coming just um, as they're getting to uh, getting to know the, the redesign uh, headquarters building. Um, they're finding yeah. that um, things like increased IT shocker is more expensive than they expected. Um, but other than that, their uh, their expenses side is. Uh, so, um, for fiscal 18, they're, um, they're going to have five vacancies. Uh, they're planning on filling four, uh, and those people will probably not get through the academy until uh, late summer, early fall. So that doesn't matter. Sure they other thing. They, uh, they're expecting delivery of the ladder truck, but I guess Charlie bought them. Um, <laughs> So obviously he's uh, deeply appreciative because uh, I guess it's replacing a 23-year-old truck. Though. We should see the rewards he gets on his credit cards. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure he's got a lot of frequent flyer miles. Um, and the, the, their 23-year-old truck apparently leaks oil every time they take it out. So it uh, should definitely be uh, uh, reduced uh, repair costs once they get the new truck. And uh, I think that's it. So I move that the <coughs> request uh, of the fiscal 18 for seven million four hundred fifty-nine thousand and twenty-two dollars uh, be approved. Okay, minus the offset. <coughs> yeah, the offset. So seven two eight six zero oh, eight eight. Yeah. Yes. Do I have a second? Second. Okay. Uh, questions and discussion, Brian. What offsets would there be at the fire department? It's the ambulance. Of the ambulance. Oh, okay. <coughs> they did say they, because of, of manning is a little better this year than some past years, they've been able to use the second ambulance a little more this year than they have the past years, which means they're bringing in a little more money into the uh, ambulance revolving. I was thinking water. That's why I was. That's why I was jumping on. <laughs> right. They, yeah, the water they spend in putting out fires. Yeah. Uh, it's a, it, that's an expense. Okay. Yeah, it comes from the revolving fund. Other questions? Comments? Okay, the motion's been made and seconded for 7,286,088. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous. So he's looking at four buyouts with a possible $100,000 for this fiscal year yeah. for the reserve fund. Yeah. <coughs> and, and he doesn't anticipate any retirement. Two, two almost definites for next year. Right. One of which will be uh, a two percenter. Uh, they don't have any. He, the chief, is the only one left in the fire department with the with the seven percent deferred payment. That, that will be hopefully an expensive buyout when that happens. Hmm. So far, so that's that's times three. Yeah. Right. The twenty-one percent. Yeah. 
So it's, uh, there can't be many left, because it was 5% in what, 85, and then 2% in like 91. There cannot be many people left at, with the 5%, except. Right. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Okay, uh, any other budgets for you guys? Manager. Okay, I'm just checking. How about, uh, yeah. do you do inspections? Yeah, we did. We did. Yeah. Yeah. You didn't take the vote. I thought we did. Well, I think we seconded. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, we did. And then he asked a question. All those in favor of the 7286088, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. We nailed it. David? <laughs> I'll do the manager's budget, and Peter will do the, uh, the planning budget. Okay. Uh, just before we start that, uh, Paul and Daryl, do you guys do inspections? Yeah, we, yes. met, we're, we met with them today. We'll have that on Monday. Okay. That's okay. Well, that, that sounds good. Uh, inspections. The manager's budget is on 32 and 33. Okay. It, the, um, it has some in increases primarily in the uh, salary and wages and um, the longevity columns. Um, if you notice that this also, this year there's a CPA offset <coughs> for a total of um, 34468 and that's um, for the work that the system town manager does as well as the uh, management analyst does in, uh, for the CPA. Um, it's divided into 20% for the management analysis analyst and the 15% for the assistant town manager pertaining to the CPA offset. Hey, David? Yes? That was uh, FY17. I can't hear you. That was FY17. And FY8. Okay, right, right. And 18 is 20 and 20. Right. Okay, could you repeat so, that again then? 20 and 20? It was 20 and 15, but it, uh, in FY18, um, it will be, uh, each would be 20% of that total. 20% uh, for the uh, assistant town manager and 20% for the manager analyst. 20% of their salaries. Of their salary. It's the offset of the CPA. Okay, it's charge two. Mm -hmm. The CPA? All right. Okay. The number is there for 2018 in the budget book. Right. The, do the number for 2017 is uh, 24819. Okay, and the, um, with, with the offsets, the uh, ten, manager's total figure is 629,921 as printed. Okay, are there any questions? Alan. Uh, there's a large increase in the other offset, the 5190. There's water and sewer. Is there any reason why it's such a large difference? I, I don't know why. There is a lot. Could be because the, the budget went up, <coughs> you know, significantly with the addition of the uh, uh, assistant town manager. And the, the, you know, if we look at the budget versus, now of course that's when it was 117. The budget went up thirty-eight thousand. The offset went up thirty thousand. Yeah. It may have been a reapportionment. I can ask Sandy about that. Yeah, David, could you ask that question? Why, why the uh, water and sewer offset went from the hundred hundred eighteen thousand to one forty-seven? Okay. 
it could be just upon this the salary adjustments and adding of, of the, um, the the assistant town manager position, which he was a transfer from the health department and the management analyst was a transfer from the planning department, which this this salaries was adjusted coming over, including the longevity. Yeah. So. It, it could be the, uh, you know, in the fact that when we appropriated <coughs> the... Well, one of the things that we have, we've talked about these um, water sewer, sewer offsets in the past, and I think when Andrew Flanagan was here, one of the things we concluded was that the offsets are adjusted a full year later. And so the offset, so example, when we talked about this in the past, the offset for water and sewer in FY18 would reflect budgeted changes in FY17, not budgeted changes in FY18. Okay. Good point. Yeah. So if you look at the jump in the <coughs> if you look at the jump in the department from 16 to 17, the so town manager appropriation went from 607 to 774. That's the basis which the offset was increased in 18. Uh, Dean, I think that varies from budget to budget I, yeah it's always the ones I ask about that they give me that answer because there are their their whole concept at least what they've said in the past maybe is that, that applies mostly to the water and sewer offsets it is to the water and sewer offsets because oh. the argument they've made in the past is that the current year budget is subject to change so if you were to change the current if you were to base up the current year budget and a change were to be made then you would have to go change the offsets on the fly which <coughs> Difficult. So, if you base on the prior year's approved budgeted number, then it's, it's smoother for them to do. Yep, that makes sense. No. Okay. Are there any other questions? Okay. So, uh, do I have a motion for six twenty nine nine twenty one? So moved. Second. Second. Okay. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Peter? Planning. Page? 75. 76. Okay. Okay. Um, the department also keeps an eye on the uh, redevelopment board and under the re redevelopment board in the past has been budgeted um, the uh, Gibbs School, Parmenter School and the Dallin, uh, former Dallin Library. Um, Gibbs of course is no longer, well soon no longer be a, a town building, it will be a school building. Um, attached to the Gibbs past has been the, uh, they called a building craftsman, Lamburn, um, and uh, his, so he, his skills, his, he will not be needed on, in, on Gibbs in this coming fiscal year because the contractor will take care of the building and after that the school will take care of it. At least that's the current thinking. Um, so that position has been moved into planning in the budget. So you'll see a new, does it look like a new? Okay, so the building craftsman? The building craftsman, yeah. Where is he anyway? Lambert. Yeah. Went up from the bottom. Oh yeah, went up from the bottom, right. And that was before that was in uh, the redevelopment board? Yes, it was. Under the Gibbs building. So that there are various adjustments associated with that. The only thing that didn't happen is he, <laughs> he lost his overtime, apparently. <clears throat> but he, according to the actuals, he wasn't taking it anyway. <laughs> So well, he won't be working for the, he won't be taken care of 
of gifts, but they'll still have uh, the Winterburn the Robbins House, 23 Maple Street, the Senior Center, and the Jefferson Cutter House. Actually, I think that this is a long overdue adjustment, but it's better late than never. Another change is that the person that worked for the Conservation Commission uh, has left. <coughs> that's the environmental planner. Well, that's what the title is now, anyway. And uh, it used to be a half time position. Well, it's been increased to a full time position because uh, there's much more demand for environmental judgment, and there's nobody in the town employee that can provide that. You know, for example, the other day we were uh, asking about um, McLennan Field and the uh, settling the uh, ponds and marshes out there, and, and there wasn't really anybody in the town that could I could answer that with 15 questions about that. So perhaps this person will be able to tackle those kinds of things beyond the stuff that is directly, ordinarily, um, <coughs> conservation commission work. That's a position that's sort of grown over the years. Didn't that used to be a, a, a very part-time position in the conservation commission budget of I don't know, 10, 20,000 or something? Yeah, I, it's been a half time for quite a while now, though. I think you're right. Um, you'll see adjustments for training and travel and the expenses. And, uh, uh, Jenny Raid is uh, working hard to get her staff. <coughs> up to speed. And that's what that's for. If you're concerned about why the dues and subscriptions has gone down, <laughs> because the uh, highly touted piece of software has not worked out very well, the one that provided information to, to the development people. Now that you've, uh, they've eliminated the Technical planner, GIS coordinator? Oh, yes, and that will, person will not be rehired. That position will not be filled. So it almost looks like they've, in effect, eliminated that slot and increased the environmental planner approximately the same. That's right. There, if you take, if you take uh, Lamburn out of it, it, it's more or less level. Overall, so uh, we we recommend the uh, budget as as printed. Why is the, oh, questions? Christine? Uh, Peter, what is, do they have a plan for filling that environmental planner position? Do they expect to fill that position? Soon? Yes, and I think, I think she said that, that it's in process now. I can't remember whether it was just about, do you remember? Uh, it, it, she was almost ready to select the person. She had a, was working with the human resources. Other questions? Charlie? <clears throat> so, um, where did the, uh, where did the Gibbs income and expenses flow through? That's, in the, that's under, it's still under ARB, but not the Gibbs, but I mean, that's where it used to be and so forth. We're coming to that. It, 
it was under the ARB, yeah. the Gibbs? Yeah, the, the, those schools that, that, that were managed by the town were managed by, technically by the ARB. Actually, it's under general fund rental yeah. properties. They split a couple pages later, they split them out, they split the properties out. Oh, okay, that's, actually, it's staring me right in the face. If it was any bit bigger, it would have been. Well, we, we haven't got to that yet, John. Okay, thank you, Peter. Other questions? What's the sort of justification for the spike in in-state travel? That's part of the training, training and travel efforts to boost up our staff. They, they travel to conferences and training sessions around the state. That's like a five-time increase. Yeah. So she's going to send her staff all over the place for more training? Probably easier to get people to travel if you pay them. Okay, other questions? Yeah, I'd just like to make a comment. Sure. Um, <clears throat> I think the, the in-state travel expense and those training expenses have been there for a long time. When uh, Alan McLennan was here, you know, he, he had several projects like that. Uh, whatever we used to call the place that became McLennan Field. Um, Reedsbrook. Yeah. The Reedsbrook project. And then he had the, the Leahy uh, Hospital project going on. And they used to do a lot of uh, conferences and travel uh, under those projects. So I think what you're looking at here is the, uh, without those projects, they put it directly in the budget. Okay. Any other questions or comments? Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. Okay, so moved and seconded for 479-979? Yes. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Unanimous. Okay, others, Peter? The redevelopment Board. The redevelopment Board itself is double funded on page uh, 80. I recommend it as printed. Any questions? Second. Okay. Moved and seconded for ten thousand eight hundred dollars. Any discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Peter. Okay. And, and then the other thing here is the general fund rental properties. So the big one is Gibbs, and as you can see, the, the request is zero page 83. Um, the our, our matter is level funded at 15,000 on the next page. And down the library is level funded at 5,000. <clears> and that's summarized with the income from those pro the various properties on page 87. So we have the cost in the column under Twenty eighteen, twenty thousand, and the rental property income uh, considerably more than that. So, as has been true quite a lot, if you look at it this way, their rental properties are paying their way. years I've been corrected to say that of course there are other costs that are not included. <coughs> yeah, because this is run out of the manager's office. <coughs> if I remember correctly, the analyst was basically spending her time on this. True. 
Okay, so proposing 15,000 for parmenter expenses and 5,000 for gallon library expenses. Is there a motion? No move. Second. Second. Move from second. Any questions? Okay, all those in favor uh, of those amounts, uh, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Yes, Troy. So, <clears throat> I'd just like to, maybe I can just uh, ask for an explanation here, make sure I'm reading this right. But basically, um, on the summary of page 87, we are having income in 2018 that's $400,000 less than the prior year. Is that that's something, yeah, that's about a little less than that. Yeah, yeah. 300 and something, 350000 probably. Because we don't get any from Gibbs. Since Gibbs will be under construction. So when we're voting Gibbs, we're voting zero. We're voting to lower so our, our revenues. In other words, the, the revenues versus the expenses. If you look on page 87, we had 588,000, 582,000, 608,000, and now we're down to 272,000. So that's the that's the the impact on the general, general revenue from this the switch that gives to uh, the school department. Now, are, are, did all of those maintenance costs also go, go away, Peter? Or are they shifted into other departments? The, the, uh, in FY18, the, the school will be controlled by the contractor who will pay the whatever needed to keep it, from, keep it warm and so forth. Okay. Charlie, that's why the bucket above it went from 219 to, to, to the 239,648 to 20,000. Because to get to 239, you start on page 83 and you get the 219,648. And you move forward and get the 15,000 off of page 85 and the 5,000 off page 86. So the following year, when page 83 goes from 220,000 to zero, when you roll it onto that summary sheet, that's why it's now down to 20,000 expenses. I don't know what you're, uh, what you're concerned about, Charlie. I think he's making the point that we lost a lot of money when we gave up the Gibbs. Oh, yeah, uh, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. It's not news, though. Okay, do you have any others, Peter? No, I don't. Oh, yes, I do. CBA. I, I think I interrupted the vote. Uh, yeah, uh, I I, you were in the process of voting, I rudely interrupted. I thought we had voted. Well, let's do it again. It's such fun. 5000 for the Dallin, 15000 for the parliamentary expenses. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, ZBA. Uh, <coughs> this is a very small, very small budget, but it occurred to me this year that uh, perhaps the people that, that uh, bring cases to the to ZBA have to pay something, and sure enough, they do, $400. There were 22 cases or hearings, so $8,800 goes into the general fund from the, from the zoning board. Uh, I'm sorry, 80, approximately $8,800 a year in revenue? That's what it, that's what it was, uh, that's what is, I guess it was last year. And in other years it's been around 20 uh, hearings also. Comptroller doesn't have any way to check that without going. He does, but he has to 
get all the little pieces of paper that go with the individual deposits. So is your motion as printed? As printed, yes. 26, 320. Second. Okay, moved and seconded. Uh, any questions? Okay, all those in favor of 26, 320, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Is that it, Peter? That's it. David, you're finished? Thank you. Uh, other budgets? Okay, now, uh, who will have budgets for Monday? Okay, you'll have inspections. And what will you have? Rec and rain. Okay, that's it? Yeah. Okay. Uh, other budgets that will be ready on Monday. Okay, well that, that will probably take us about a half hour at the most. Uh, and we don't have any hearings, Liz? Nope, not, not for Monday. Boy, you guys don't like to meet on Mondays. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, I hereby cancel the Monday meeting on the 27th. So our next our next meeting will be now uh, on Wednesday, March 1st. Uh, we'll have the community preservation crew in. And so that will probably take a, a chunk of the uh, of the evening. Now, uh, I would expect we've got two we got Minuteman on uh, the following Monday. We got capital planning on the following Wednesday. Uh, I've asked uh, Stephen's going to contact Ed uh, to get the Minuteman budget to us at least three or four days ahead of time uh, electronically. Uh, capital budgets on Monday. Now, Monday. Wednesday. I'm oh, sorry? Wednesday. Wednesday. Wednesday the 8th. Right. Okay, so uh, I would expect. Okay, then the uh, Wednesday, uh, the town manager is in to wrap up any other articles and discussions. Let, let me ask you this. Uh, uh, Dean brought this up with me the other night. Uh, there's four articles on increasing exemptions, uh, you know, for the elderly, for veterans, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, we could have the assessor in to discuss that. Is that something the committee, uh, it is a, a loss. It's probably a loss out of uh, uh, overlay because it, it, it's increased. There's decreased revenue. I'm not sure how much it is. Uh, do you wish to hear that, or do you want to? Is it small enough? You just want to let the selectman handle it. Um, Mary Margaret. I have. Christine gave us a, a sheet that showed what the, the amounts would be. In, you know that the state, not by who's going to get them. Here, but if you want to know the specific amounts for being elderly or a veteran or whatever, I have a list of those amounts. I can just send it out to everybody. Have you, Charlie, have we're you met with the assessors we're yet? We're meeting on the 10th. I'm sorry? We're meeting on the 10th, right? Friday the 10th. Uh, he's not here, but that's, what, oh, yeah. there's, that's yeah. what we're trying to get. Okay. Friday the 10th. Yeah. So, so could we, could, we could report the following Monday. Okay, that, that would be good. Okay, so why don't we have the... Uh, um, the subcommittee meet with the assessors, report back on Monday the 13th, uh, and then if if the committee wants the assessors to come in and have more questions, we could schedule them for Wednesday the 22nd. So, I would hope that all budgets can be presented uh, to the full committee no later than Wednesday, March 22nd. If we and then. We could save the following week for any emergencies or anything like that. But if, if people could aim for the 13th and the 22nd, and uh, you know even before that, we, I'd really appreciate it. So, uh, uh, and I realize there's some big ones there. 
uh, to do that. So uh, Monday's canceled. If there's time on Wednesday, we'll do inspections and uh, recreation and the rink. Um, and then move on with the rest. Okay, is there any, uh, any other business before the committee? Paul? Well, first off, I'd like to apologize for, to the committee for missing the first three meetings of the year. That I did because I was out of town. That's okay. Peter's taken, you know, so it'll come out of your salary. <laughs> <laughs> um, but one thing I saw reading the minutes from the meetings, um, I just, you probably already discussed it already, but I wanted to pay, understand. You talked about the, the Harry Barber as paying $10 an hour for it. Is that changed because of the minimum wage going up to $11 an hour in Massachusetts? Y yes. <laughs> so they'll have to adjust yeah. you know, for that. But I'm, I'm sure they're, they're aware of it. So I think they might have she mentioned, mentioned, she mentioned that, that at, the, at the hearing. All right. Thank you. OK. Uh, any other business before the committee? How's the snow doing? Uh, well, the, the budget, it just came out. I think they're, the budget's like 800, well, Christine, do you? Well, I, uh, the, we're at like 1.1 million. Yeah. 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 So 1.1, 1. 1, we voted 900? 900. 900, yeah. Okay, so we're, we're two to 300,000 over budget. And, uh, but winter's over. <laughs> <laughs> Right, it's going to be 65 tomorrow. We were walking along, my wife and I were walking along, and the flowers are starting to come up. So that should be it. We're slightly below the 10 year average. I'm sorry? We're slightly below the 10 year average. The 10 year average. Okay, in, in the requested appropriation? In the, right now, the, the actual expenditures at 1.1 is we're, we're below what the average is. Average, okay. Any other questions? Uh, so we certainly do have a big balance in the reserve fund. So right. it seems like likely we'll be able to, since the winter's over, we'll be able to cover <laughs> the, uh, the difference out of the My wife accuses me many times of challenging the gods. Uh, but uh, yeah, I mean, the, the, there's, there's, remember, where there's no money, is that 500,000 that always got set aside in the uh, miscellaneous there? So that money is now in the reserve fund. So we'll have plenty of money. Well, <laughs> we should have plenty of money to cover that. Will we get a copy of the special town meeting next one? Uh, the special town meeting weren't open and closed today. 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 Uh, so we should have that pretty soon. And uh, uh, Peter and I were talking. Uh, uh, the manager at this point does not need the 25000 uh for MUGAR because they're still wrestling over the whole, what was it, one and a half percent? Yeah, one and a half percent. Could need more money, but that'll, they should be okay until the uh, special in the fall. Uh, so they're looking at a special in the fall for the recodification. Okay, any other questions? Everybody's got their school budget, I assume. So I'm sure you're studying that ferociously. Uh, and, uh, but we won't have Diane to beat up on anymore. Uh, so somebody else will have to do it. Okay, any other issue? Meeting adjourned. Thank you. Gotcha.